At what speed should the passion of Joan of Arc be shown? There is no simple answer to this question. Over the years, the film has been shown many times, and most of those times, it has been shown at 24 frames per second. In the sound era, this was the only speed most projectors were capable of showing. The movements of the characters, however, sometimes look too fast at this speed, and it was undoubtedly shot at a slower speed. This visual essay explains why I think 20 frames per second is probably the best speed for the film, and why there are also good reasons to show it at 24. On the speed of The Passion of Joan of Arc, the clearest statement from Dreyer himself comes in an interview in the Danish newspaper BT, conducted on April 5, 1928, just over two weeks before the premiere. Here, Dreyer says, the film is 2,400 meters long and runs for about one and a half hours. Dreyer was not done with the editing at the time. He was, in fact, still doing reshoots. But if we base our calculations on what Dreyer said in the interview, we find that 2,400 meters at 24 frames per second gives a running time of 87 minutes, very close to one and a half hours. On the basis of this, the Danish Film Museum for many years recommended showing The Passion of Joan of Arc at 24 frames per second. For a silent film, however, there is no single correct speed. During the silent period, the great majority of film cameras were cranked by hand. Hand cranking was mechanically simple and meant that cameramen were not dependent on external power sources. But it also meant that the speed of shooting varied. Cameramen prided themselves on their steady hands and ability to keep a consistent pace, but some variation was inevitable. This was true even with the camera used to shoot the Passion of Joan of Arc, the Debris Parvo, which had a frame rate indicator. Only with the arrival of sound film would film speed be standardized because synchronized sound required the movement of the film to be completely regular. The cranking speed of cameramen was subject to outside pressures. Most importantly, raw film stock was expensive and cameramen were encouraged to keep their frame rates low. 16 frames per second is about as slow as you can go without producing flicker. 16 frames also corresponds to exactly one foot of 35 mm film, making things easy to calculate. However, cinema owners would often run things fast. Silent cinema audiences appear to have liked movies to have a bit of snap. To take just one example, for Fritz Lang's Metropolis, the composer's notes in the original musical score indicate that the film was intended to be shown at 28 frames per second even if this looks way too fast for modern eyes. In debates about the correct speed for The Passion of Joan of Arc, it is sometimes suggested that Dreyer is a slow director, and that everything should be run at the slowest possible speed to give the proper erratic tempo to the events in the film. It is true that Dreyer's later talking films are very deliberately paced and rely on long, continuous takes creating stretches of time where nothing seems to happen. But I think it is a mistake to project this style of filmmaking back onto the passion of Joan of Arc. Paya took great pride in changing his style to fit the subject matter. The passion of Joan of Arc does not rely on long, continuous shots, but on brisk cutting. The film has more than 1,300 shots, plus 150 intertitles, giving it a faster editing tempo than most films of its time. Moreover, Dreyer later acknowledged that the film's most important inspiration was the one that he got from Soviet montage cinema, famous for its propulsive, super-fast cutting. There are shots in The Passion of Joan of Arc that seem like deliberate hat tips to the Russians the cannon turning during the final sequence, which no 15th century cannon could, evokes the revolving turrets of the battleship Pochomkin in Eisenstein's film. A 
and the suckling babe, seen as Joan is led to the stake, bears a striking resemblance to the one seen just before the climactic massacre in Putovkin's mother. Given these models and the pace of the editing, it seems evident that The Passion of Joan of Arc was meant to be a fast film, not a slow one. Even so, there are compelling arguments for showing the film at a speed that makes the movements look natural. Silent film directors sometimes protested against their films being shown too fast. They suspected cinema owners of speeding up their films to finish the show early or even to squeeze in an extra show per day. A Danish newspaper cartoon comments on the practice. Hurry up, Mr. Peterson, or dinner will get cold. In the audience, the film's author protests. Ha! Ah, you banned it! This cartoon was inspired by an actual event. In September 1919, Danish director Anders Wilhelm Sandberg had gone to a neighborhood cinema in Copenhagen to see one of his films. The film was projected much too fast, and Sandberg was so incensed that he rose and protested so loudly that the police were called and arrested him. Dreyer also objected to his films being run too fast. His second film as a director, Leaves from Satan's Book, had its premiere in Norway in 1920. When he received a copy of the advertisement for the film, he could see that the show times were only an hour and 40 minutes apart, and the film was supposed to last two and a half hours, running at the correct speed of 16 frames per second. Dreyer wrote letters complaining about this. It turned out that the film had been cut by 300 meters, but also that it was run at around 26 frames per second. It made Jesus skip across the screen like a grasshopper, one witness complained. We also have a 1928 manual for projectionists published in Denmark where The Passion of Joan of Arc had its world premiere. It suggests that films should generally be run at 16 to 20 frames per second. At a higher frame rate, the manual states, movements will seem unnatural. This is only a general rule of thumb, of course, but we can try to apply it to the figures in the interview with Dreyer. Assuming that the film is 2,400 meters long, 16 frames per second gives a running time of 2 hours and 11 minutes. It is impossible to square this with Dreyer's one and a half hours, even if that running time is only approximate. 20 frames per second gives a more reasonable one hour and 45 minutes. Furthermore, there are rough timing indications in the original score for The Passion of Joan of Arc, composed for the Paris premiere in October 1928. One would think that timing indications on the sheet music for the original score would clear the matter up for good. In many ways, however, it complicates things further. The score is divided into 13 sections, 12 of which have their length given in minutes. The score contains cue indications, mostly the texts of intertitles, but also some brief descriptions of the action that allow us to say roughly where each section is supposed to begin and end. The version of the film presented on this disc is the version shown at the film's world premiere in Copenhagen in April 1928. But the score was written for a different version of the film. It was composed for the Paris premiere in October 1928. Between April and October, the film underwent some important changes. We have sources indicating that some scenes were cut after objections from the Catholic Church. Most clearly, an entire scene was cut, the one where the bishop denies Joan Holy Communion to blackmail her into signing the false confession. The scene runs around five minutes and contains some 80 shots and intertitles. The scene begins with an intertitle where Joan asks to be buried in consecrated ground and ends with one where she says that she loves God with all her heart. In the score, these two titles appear within a few bars of each other, and they have been slightly modified to make them appear to be a connected statement. This indicates that the entire scene was deliberately cut from the Paris premiere print. 
Such discrepancies make it difficult to use the score's timings as more than an approximate indication of the proper speed. Still, it is hard to make the timings fit with 24 frames per second. The timings fit better at 20. Based on the sources we have, both 20 and 24 frames per second can be justified. The 1928 interview with Dreyer seems to indicate that 24 is the correct speed, and it is certainly the way most people have experienced the film over the years. Audiences in the 1920s came with movie-going experiences and expectations different from ours. But to us, the movements of the characters frequently look rushed when the film is run at 24 frames per second. At 20 frames per second, the movements look more natural. And that was what the manual told projectionists to aim for. That fact, along with the indications in the French 1928 score, supports using a speed of 20 frames per second. Either way, the evidence is not conclusive, so presenting the film both ways is the most honest. This also allows you, the viewer, to experience the difference and variability of silent film projection speeds firsthand.